what we call balance. And remember what I said before, although the pH scale from zero to seven, um, I'm sorry, from zero to 14 is the pH scale and seven is neutral, that's not pH balance for a vagina. A vagina with a pH of seven is more prone to yeast infection. And believe it or not, one of the biggest culprits um, of a high pH is really not um, what we think it is. When you think about it, especially for a woman that's married or a woman that's um, sexually active, believe it or not, a male semen is about 7 to 7.7. .7. So someone who's actively um, engaging in intercourse with their, their husband or their mate has a vagina now that used to be very acidic, believe it or not, is now more of a base because of the constant interchange between partners. And so for, for those who come and say, well, okay, I can't get rid of this um, yeast infection, I don't have diabetes, um, I don't sleep around, or uh, I'm trying to do everything, I'm not working out at the gym, so you know, I'm not um, dealing with a lot of high, hot temperatures down there. I don't understand why I am having um, a problem with yeast. Well, believe it or not, with just a few conversations, you know, and just an exchange, you know, and I'm asking them, okay, just the standards, okay, are you using um, tampons? Yes. Well, guess what? Believe it or not, when you look at the pH of those cotton tampons, guess what? Believe it or not, it's at a pH of 9. Mm -hmm. And that's why some women report around their period, believe it or not, that they're, not only are they having a period, but guess what? They have a lot of yeast. And so when you think about it with pH, guess what? You're putting in that um, tampon that's at nine or even at 10. Believe it or not, guess what? You're gonna have yeast. So what can we do? What can we do to um, lower the pH of, um, of, of our vagina? Believe it or not, about 900 years ago, um, the most common um, form of birth control was actually lemons. And believe it or not, if you look at um, a lot of the women who um, actively try to prevent um, either a disease or even um, um, birth, is they put lemons in their vagina. Now, sounds kind of crazy, but guess what? It was mildly effective because the um, acid in the lemon juice, guess what? It killed the sperm and prevented pregnancy. And ancient um, civilizations now still do it, and believe, not ancient civilization, African village now actually still do it. So what I've seen is that um, women that come in and want some type of treatment where other therapies have failed can actually use organic lemon juice um, in a douche um, at very small doses and actually find um, therapeutic treatment with it. Another thing is tea tree oil. Tea tree oil is an essential oil that is used um, so much um, for disinfecting. Um, out of all the things in my house, probably one of the most um, things that I use is tea tree oil. I use tea tree oil to clean my house. I use tea tree oil for my hair. That's the reason why I don't have dandruff. And if I ever have the occasional yeast infection, I actually douche with 10 drops of tea tree oil um, and almost always within one day my yeast infection is actually cured. Now, I say all this to you and am I saying is this something you should do? Absolutely not. You have to follow your doctor's recommendation. But in the absence of that, um, I do think that there are some healthy alternatives that we know um, to work and to be effective. As a naturopathic physician, um, we strive to find other um, treatments beyond prescription that are reported to be with literature, with evidence-based um, studies that show that these therapies work. And so for us who are constantly complaining about, I have dandruff, I have a yeast infection, I have a urinary tract infection. 
what can I do? None of the um, antibiotics um, that I'm taking seems to be effective. I think it really does go back to looking at the pH. It really does. When you bring that pH more in balance to what that particular body part needs to be, then I feel that we don't have the dis-ease, not disease, but the dis-ease of whatever we're, I'm talking about. I myself um, started um, testing my skin after um, I found that I had um, eczema. And I found that my pH of my skin, that normally should be 4.5 to 5.2, guess what? was like 6.7. And I'm like, wow, that's the reason why I was having some of the irritation. That's the reason why I was having some of the inflammation. Along with all these chemicals and all these products that I can't even name or even pronounce that I am now just saturating my skin with. And believe it or not, I think the biggest culprit um, that I found was one product, and it was called sodium lauryl sulfate. And we, we know this by, guess what? Everything that we use. We see sodium lauryl sulfate in our laundry detergent. We see sodium lauryl sulfate in our soap. We see sodium lauryl sulfate in our shampoos. And believe it or not, sodium lauryl sulfate is in the toothpaste that we use. Now, just to give you an idea of what sodium lauryl sulfate is and what it's commonly used for, it is commonly used for those pressure washer people that um, clean and pressure wash your house and your concrete. That's what sodium lauryl sulfate is. And guess what? We're bombarding our skin with it. And so it's no wonder now that all of the products that we now use now is causing some type of irritation. And we don't know why. We changed a lot of the things that we normally do. When you think about soap, and we'll just stop right there for a minute. Soap bothers me so much, not because um, I think um, formulating soap is, is the best thing since sliced bread, but because soap itself is something that I, I firmly believe is um, a big problem. When you look at commercial soap, and many people tell me, oh, well, you know what, um, I can't use um, I can't use this, I can't use that, I'm allergic to it. No, just to let you know, an allergic reaction, guess what, sends you to the ER. You may have a sensitivity to it, but when you're allergic to something, that's a trip to the ER. So if you're having something that's placed on your skin and it's caustic, such as soap, then you're gonna have to find a healthy alternative. Now, when I say soap um, in my lectures, I'm literally talking about commercial soap. When you look at the dials and the, um, even the doves, if you will, typically um, when I lecture, I actually give you the ingredients of what dove actually is. Dove is just like dial in any other um, soap. However, what they've done with dove is good in that they made dove a lot more pH balance to the skin, not pH balance by adding a quarter cup of moisturizing cream, it brought the pH level down of Dove to about 5.5 to 6.0. And so effectively, guess what? You're not getting the irritation or you're not getting the sensitivity that may cause you to itch after you get out of the bathtub. Now when you look at Dial, and um, I can actually give you guys the website. When you look at Dial and you look at Jurgens and you look at some of these others, where they have to actually disclose this information. And you see the ingredients that these soaps are made of. One of them is sodium um, tallowate, which is actually beef fat or beef rendering. Then this is what you're putting on your skin. And so when you don't know, then you say, oh, well, I don't know. But when you do know better, do better. And so you won't have all these skin conditions. You won't be in the doctor's office complaining. And you won't be so upset as to why my skin looks like this, especially after the age of 40. I don't think anyone wants after the age of 40 to have any type of skin eruptions, skin conditions, and adult onset acne. And it's crazy, you know? And, 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 and always, um, I'm sorry, not always, is it hormonal? It literally is some of the things that we're putting on our face. And it literally is sometimes some of the foods that we're consuming. And so I, I say to you, without knowing your pH, 
How do you know your pH? Believe it or not, there's these little um, paper pH strips that you can actually buy at the store. Um, it's over the counter, and you can actually place them on your skin to determine what your pH is. And so if your pH is a slightly high, then find products that you know um, that are actually lower on the pH scale. Um, there was a company, and I don't know if it still exists, um, Pfizer Derm. And that company was named Pfizer Derm because of the pH. They recognized that a lot of the people's skin's condition had a lot to do with the pH of their skin. And so what they did was they formulated products that was a little bit more acidic and not pH neutral. I know that Neutrogena and some of the other products that we have on the market that are actually very good products, even like Aveeno, um, they do have a pH of about 7. And although that's neutral, if your body is acidic and your particular body says that I need something that's slightly lower than 7, then that's not pH neutral for your skin, if that makes sense. Um, I'm always amazed at... Um, the, the amount of products that we have. About two months ago, I went to the hair um, supply store and um, it was like the Walmart of um, hair care products. And um, I wanted to find something that I thought would um, shampoo my hair a little bit more effectively. Now my, my husband and I, we have an ongoing argument one, because my husband is still stuck in, in his ways, and, and probably rightfully so for some, and that my husband likes bubbles. He likes suds. And so most of the products that I make in my hair, um, in my house, does not have the suds that he wants. So when I make my laundry detergent, I make it in the five gallon. And believe it or not, within two weeks, that five gallon is gone if it's left up to my husband. <laughs> because he's still trying to see the suds. I literally had to die to that. When you think about what suds are, suds are actually just a surface reaction. It has nothing to do with cleansing your clothes, guess what, or even your skin. And so we're really going to have to let that stuff go. Another thing that they do with a lot of the products is because if we create the products in its natural state, it just doesn't look good. When I formulate my products, my, my biggest disclaimer is none of my products are going to look alike because they are totally organic. So you may get a shea butter that's a little bit um, light yellow, a um, little bit of cream, but I don't put any fillers in it. And I can promise you that what you get is going to be pure, natural, and organic ingredients. And we can't say that anymore with some of the products. Believe it or not, um, if you have a product from a um, commercial um, health and beauty aid maker, they can actually make some claims that are so not true. And so when you're looking at these products and you're thinking that they're natural, and the biggest culprit is these um, companies that are making products that they say is shea butter, shea lotion. When you break those products down, it's about 1% to 3% shea butter. Not enough to actually treat um, the condition um, that you're thinking about treating. Um, there's no way 1% or 3% shea butter, cocoa butter for that matter, mango butter for that matter, is going to be enough to effectively um, treat whatever condition you have. You're going to have to have a product that is pretty much anywhere from 50 to 75% shea butter in content. Uh, or cocoa butter in content, or mango butter in content. And if you find more ingredients that are more natural to nature, um, like the butters, um, my biggest thing is um, I don't do lotion. And um, I say that because when you think about the, 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 the makeup of lotion, lotion is 70% water, it's 20% fillers, it's 3% um, a preservative, and then the other 5% is stabilizers. And so when I look at trying to treat um, a particular skin condition that needs moisturization, well guess what, you just told me in that lotion that you said is going to cure or help or treat my product, I mean my, my problem is that you just told me that that product was a hydrated product. 